Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome back to my Top Things You Missed in Elden Ring series. With five full playthroughs and a nearly level 300 character on New Game Plus 5, along with the Platinum Trophy and about 350 hours in the game, I like to think I've got a little bit of an idea what I'm talking about up to this point, so hopefully I can share that knowledge with you and help you out. Today we're covering the second main legacy dungeon in the game, the Rhea Lucaria Academy. As always, I'll scour the area with a fine tooth comb for you and find every single little secret, and then I'll call out the top 10 to 15 things that I think are the most important for you to grab and do while you're in the area, and I'll stop just as we get to the main boss as to not give you too many spoilers for the game. If you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. I have just very recently gone full time with this, so it will really help me pump out as much content as possible for you. Let's get into tip one. Okay, super quickly, before we actually get into tip one, you're gonna need to know how to gain access to the academy in the first place. And to do that, you need to grab the academy glintstone key, which is on a body just behind this dragon. You don't actually need to kill the dragon like I did here. You can just run past him. And to get there, you just wanna go directly north from the temple quarter site of grace to that group of rocks there. Alrighty then, make your way up to where I am on the map here, and after you've cleared out all the enemies on the stairs, you'll be faced with this camp. You can just beeline it past the camp and go straight to the academy if you want, but obviously the more enemies you kill, the more runes you get, and there's a bit of loot around here. Follow me looping around the right hand side here, pick off that guy who's patrolling, sneak up to the barricades, and when you take out the guy on the flamethrower here, it will also aggro the two knights to come towards you. Once you've dealt with them, you should be able to quick sneak, and if you didn't know, that is literally just sprinting while crouched up to this giant flaming machine and give the guy operating it a backstab. Then wail on him quick enough and you should be able to finish it off before it even has a chance to do anything. Now you can clear out the rest of the camp and loot at your leisure and I'll meet you at the entrance to the academy. Once you reach the end of the bridge, you'll come across the South Rhea Lucaria Gate, Site of Grace. Using the key that you looted earlier, you can now go through the seal, and it will actually take you to the northern side of the academy, where you see me here. If you interact with the seal in front of you towards the southeast, that will take you back where you just came from. And interacting with the one facing towards the northeast will actually take you onwards to the next area. So that will take you over these broken bridges and will open up a whole new area to you. For now, face the southwest and head on up the lift. There's a few very self-explanatory areas ahead of you. Just progress through, kill all the enemies, and when you come to the church with the marionettes and the spellcaster, just make sure you look behind where he was and you'll find a somber smithing stone rank three. Continue on and you'll find yourself back outside again, swarmed with zombies. Just clear them all out so that you can loot at your leisure. Try and not get grabbed by them because their grab attacks will actually deplete your FP. And then once you've cleared them all out, facing towards the bridge that takes you over to the next area, turn right and head back up the hill a bit. You'll find here there's a path on your left that you can run down, and that'll bring you to a level 4 smithing stone. The most important part of this area, however, once you've crossed the bridge and cleared out the skeletons, look above you to the left and you'll see there's some loot hanging off the edge of the cliff there. That is a particularly strong spirit ashes. You can hop off the bridge to the left and just jump on the platform there, but I'll show you the correct way to do it in this video just in case you don't want to risk yeeting yourself off a bridge. So run back down and around to the right, as you see me doing here. Just be careful when hopping over that little lip that you don't fall down. Deal with the two marionettes just up above. And then you'll come to the marionette soldier spirit ashes. This specifically summons two of the marionette soldiers with the bow and arrows. And oh my god are they strong. They're basically glass cannons. They die pretty easy. But they do a phenomenal amount of damage. And I actually used these two to help me defeat the last boss during my first playthrough. That's how good they are. Hop off the ledge once you've grabbed the ashes and we'll move straight into tip three. Lots more zombies and a few dogs here. Just be careful as you're clearing the area. Come to the left hand side to the lip of this cliff and you'll see a scarab just off in the distance. You won't see it in my video because I accidentally aggroed it and had to kill it before I could hit record. But he's right where I'm aiming with the bow at the moment. And when you kill him you'll be rewarded with some ashes of war. But the main reason I wanted to show you this tip, once you've cleared out the area and got to the main building that looks like it takes you to the next area, 
Turn around and start heading back down the hill where you see me going. When you get to this giant gravestone here, hop off behind it and you'll see some loot at the base of this gravestone down here. Once you clear out the zombies, you'll see it is an absolutely awesome looking Carrion Knight's armor set. I wouldn't blame you if you used this for the rest of the game. How cool does it look? I am such a fashion oriented player in Dark Souls games. I love my character looking as awesome as possible, and this set is so awesome. All right, let's move on to tip number four now. As you come through the room at the end of this section, you'll be faced with a giant rotating lift. Ignore that for now, and you'll be faced with another one of the naked vampire guys. Once you take him out, you'll be rewarded with the gravity well sorcery, and then it's time to get your platforming skills on. If you jump right, you can get on top of here, and you're rewarded with a somber smithing stone three. And finally, to set yourself up for the next tip, position yourself where I am, wait for the lift to come up to you and jump onto it, and then you want to hop off where I have on the next level up, and I'll meet you there. Once you've taken out the pathetically weak enemies here, run into the building ahead of you and there'll be a site of grace for you to rest at. Once you've rested there, deal with the sorcerer in front of you and then turn left. In here you'll find a scroll for a few new sorceries, and also the Glintstone Craftsman's Cookbook, which allows you to make magic grease, magic bone arrows, and magic bone bolts. So now no matter what physical weapons you're using, you can apply magic damage to them, which is really going to help with certain enemies. Also, before you leave this room, hit the bookshelf in front of where you picked up the scroll from the corpse. You'll see it was an illusionary wall. You can grab the level 4 smithing stone from the balcony just outside on your right, but more importantly, hop off the balcony on your left. Keep going along and jump up these rocks here. There's another jump here, be careful you don't fall down. And then you'll be rewarded with the Olivenous Grin... <laughs> Olivenous Glintstone Crown. What's special about this helmet? It will decrease your HP by 10%, but it will also increase your intelligence by 3. There's another few headpieces similar to this that do very similar buffs and debuffs, and all of them are also used as part of a quest to unlock a tower later on in the game. Even if you're not going for an intelligence build and you're not bothered about these, make sure you pick up at least one so that you can unlock the tower that I just spoke about later on in your playthrough. Go back to the site of grace that we were just at, head back up and kill the sorcerer in front of you again, and this time turn right. You'll be faced with a couple of sorcerers, it should be very easy for you to deal with. And then as you go further up, you'll be faced with four more and a giant living jar. This can be a very tricky area to deal with, especially if you have no ranged capabilities. I'll speed up the footage a bit, but I'll show you exactly how I managed to do it, barely, with melee only. So hopefully it will help you get through it in your playthrough as well. Once you've cleared them all out and grabbed the ritual pot from the chest, you'll see there's a door that cannot be opened from this side. Do a 180 and continue up the stairs, killing the rest of the sorcerers, and we'll go and find out how to open that door right now. As you're coming up these stairs, you want to swipe at the first bookshelf on your left, and you'll see it was a hidden passage all along. Progress through here and you'll pick up a comet from the chest, which is a great sorcery spell. Nowhere near as OP as the Comet Azure, which we'll collect later on in the game, but still very good. Just behind the desk is a stone sword key. Then you can use the ladder to climb up one floor. There's no loot up here, but you can hop down behind this painting here where the ceiling's broken. Drop down in this narrow passage and you're now in the room that connects to the closed door. There's lots of little baby living jars in here. It's worth taking them out before you loot anything because they will activate once you loot. And then you're rewarded with a graven school talisman, which increases the potency, i.e. the strength, of all your sorceries. So lots of things in this academy that are going to make intelligence-based builds very, very powerful. Now you can open that closed door and head back through. And in the next tip, we'll face our first boss of the area. They've put this boss in quite a tricky place because you've just had to deal with two massive groups of sorcerers and the giant living jar, and now you have to fight a boss. So I'm coming up to this boss fight with very few flasks left. So let's see how quickly he fucks me up.
Okay. That did not go at all how I expected. And he's down. And with that, you're rewarded with a memory stone, which, as you know, increases the amount of spells you can attune at one time. And you unlock the Sight of Grace. Now let's move on to the next tip. Now, before we move forwards into the second half of this legacy dungeon, go back a sight of grace and head back out to the giant rotating lift. Head all the way to the top of the cliff where I am here. You can grab the items on the right if you didn't get them earlier. Now you want to wait till one of the lift platforms goes past and jump on and ride it most of the way down. Make sure you keep your eye on the other side of the lift. And when you see the platform that I've just jumped off at, follow me down. An absolute ton of enemies come alive here. Don't feel like you have to fight them all. Just grab the loot and run if you want. That's exactly what I did. You'll get yourself a golden rune three. And more importantly, the Avianet Soldier Spirit Ashes, which I'm not going to lie, I've never used before because I much prefer the marionettes. Now you can head back, jump back on the lift that we just got off of and ride it all the way down. It will drop out underneath you, but it's fine. You can fall on the floor. You won't take any fall damage. And now be ready to face a Virgin Abductor. These enemies can be absolutely brutal. This is the Virgin Abductor that Patches was talking about earlier. If you let her kill you, and she has to kill you with her grab attack that sucks you inside, you will actually be teleported. You'll be warped to a new location. I don't advise doing so yet. If you are following along with the guide, try and not get eaten by her. One thing that will help with that, I don't know if anyone knew this, but if you mash the buttons on your controller while you're in any enemy's grab attack, it will reduce the damage that they do to you. You can see here, you can hear the damage ticks still going on, but I'm no longer taking damage. And that's because I was mashing the buttons on the controller. I think this is an intended gameplay mechanic, but trust me, it works. Whether it's a glitch or not, it works. Once you've killed her, you can loot a long tail cat talisman, which eliminates fall damage. You become immune to fall damage. But don't make the same mistake I made. That doesn't mean you can make any fall. If the fall would usually kill you, it will still kill you. It just means that any falls that wouldn't kill you will no longer damage you. You can then hop up these crystals here, and at the end of this cliff, you can loot a Lost Ashes of War item, which lets you duplicate Ashes of War so that you have two copies of them. And you're done here. Warp back to the debate parlor site of Grace, where the boss was that we just defeated, and we'll continue on to the next tip. For the next tip, just explore the courtyard at your leisure. The one bit I'll point out specifically is this golden seed you can pick up just to the left-hand side, and then if you keep following where I'm going, you'll come across a crystal crab, which drops another one of the glintstone crowns. This one I personally think think is way better than the other one that we picked up earlier because it does the plus three int just like the other one but it reduces stamina instead of health and personally i think stamina is a much more maintainable resource than health is that's all there is of note in the courtyard so we'll move on to tip 11 now once you've cleared out the courtyard and done the side with the crystal crab and the golden seed come to the other side and you'll see this broken bridge if you hop onto it and sprint to the bottom you can grab a smithing stone five before this giant ball starts hurtling towards you if you watch its movements carefully you can roll either side of it if you're careful you can grab the crystal darts and the fur calling finger remedy on the way and then once you've made it to the top you're safe in this hallway there's a locked door on your left which we'll unlock later and a portal on your right, which we'll also go through later. For now, it's time to try and tackle Moon Grum, the Carrion Knight. And he is a tough bastard. He very nearly gets me a couple of times. His parries are awesome. But then once you finally manage to take him down, you'll get 3,000 runes and the Carrion Knight's shield. From where you saw him, head left, and at the end of this walkway, you'll unlock a shortcut, which leads you back out to just above the courtyard. There's a few sorcerers you can take out here, and then just below a few of the zombie guys. Then go in the room behind you and take out that sorcerer, and you'll come upon a glintstone wet blade, which lets you apply magic affinity to weapons when using Ashes of War. Now run back to where you fought Moongrum, and take a right here, just where this dead sorcerer is. You can jump over the balcony, and unlock yet another shortcut, which brings you out directly opposite the portal that we saw earlier. Now prepare yourself and then head up the ladder because there's a couple of sorcerers and a mad pumpkin head as well. I fumbled this big time but somehow managed to get the mad pumpkin head to fall down and I just left him there. Once you've dealt with all the enemies you can grab the glint stone scarab from that chest which lowers your defenses but also reduces the cost of sorceries so again another great item if you're going for a full glass cannon intellect build and then head on out to the balcony and you can drop down and grab yourself a golden rune 7 and then drop down again 
to be right where the portal is. You can go through it now, but I won't be going through it yet. I'll revisit it a bit later. Now that you've explored all that, if you go back to where you found Moongrum, the Carrion Knight, and go straight forward to the lift, that will actually lead you to the end boss for this area. So we'll leave that there and mop up the other few bits in this zone before we go and do the last boss. Next up on our list is the rooftops. To get to the rooftops, now that you've unlocked all of the various shortcuts and doors in this area, head back to the site of Grace at the courtyard, and then as I'm doing here, take out or run past the two sorcerers that are shooting at you. Then you can jump over the balcony here, immediately look behind you and you'll see another sorcerer on the stairs. You can take him out and unlock another shortcut for this area. Now head back up the stairs, take out this sorcerer, and as you turn the corner we can drop down onto the rooftops. Be very careful of the marionettes here because they can fuck you up if you're an absolute moron like me. And now you look sufficiently like a pincushion, we can carry on with our quest. You want to head up the ladder here now. There is also a golden rune 4 that you can pick up just to the left hand side before you go up the ladder. And then at the top you've got three of them birdmen and a sorcerer at the end of this walkway. So be very careful and good luck. Once you've defeated them, head round to either the left or right, grab the meteor bolts and then drop down. Now you've got a few options, but I suggest you do the route in the same way I did. Come to the edge of this roof here, and as long as you're sprinting and time it right, you'll be able to make this jump like so. Now you'll need to take out many, many marionettes as you're on your way to this tower. Two more will ambush you as soon as you get inside. Once they've all been cleared out, climb up the ladder, and up here you'll be rewarded with a full moon crossbow. Now that you're done in the tower, jump down here. Make sure you jump so you don't fall down. Hop off this roof and to the one just below and you'll grab another smithing stone four. And now you're done with this little detour and you're back where we were previously. Drop down again and take out the two marionettes. Then you can run straight forward all the way to the end to grab a golden rune four. That's all that there is this way so we'll turn around and head back. Now drop off on the right hand side where you killed the first marionette. Run over to this archway and you can grab an imbued sword key. The imbued sword keys are used just here. There is three imbued sword keys in the game. No more, no less. So this is a very, very important item if you are looking to 100% everything, as you won't be able to access a whole area of the game without picking up this key and using it at one of these belfries. Now you can jump over to this other roof and grab the two smithing stone three. Head back where we were, and the final thing we want to do before we jump on top of the church is climb down this ladder clear out the crabs and you'll be rewarded with the somber smithing stone 4 and also from over here you can actually see another one of them crystal crabs shortly we will be where the crystal crab is so you, we can just melee him if we need to but if you have any ranged weapons you can kill him from here like so and you get the twin sage glintstone crown for killing him which basically combines both the buffs and debuffs of the other two crowns we've got up to this point as you'll see it gives you plus six to your intelligence but also reduces both your hp and stamina by 10 percent so if you just want to do as much damage as possible and you're really not worried about your health or your stamina then that's the helm for you finally climb back up the ladder and jump onto the roof of the church here there's absolutely nothing on the right hand side so we'll go to the left you can see that item just off on the roof there but we want to clear out the enemies first because they will try and ambush you if you go straight for the item so take out the marionette and then if they haven't already dropped down from your fight with the marionette like they did for me hopefully you can coax the bird men down with ranged attacks once you've cleared them out you can go and loot the magic grease and then grab the golden rune 3 from the beams inside before you drop down. Drop down very carefully onto this chandelier, and you can grab the second Academy Glintstone key. If you recall from our Leonia of the Lakes guide, Thops was asking for one of these. So when you get chance, go back to the church that he was at right at the beginning of Leonia of the Lakes. Go give it to him and see what he has to say. Now drop down, beat up the sorcerers around here, and grab the Shattering Crystal sorcery spell that you can see. This is also where you can go to head outside and kill that crystal crab if you weren't able to get it earlier. And finally, hop down the ladder here and you'll be back in the very first church we came to at the start of the video with the sorcerer and the marionettes. That is it for tip 12. I have one final tip where I'm going to show you where to find a legendary talisman, the Radagon icon, and also take you through to see what's on the other side of the portal. Make your way through the portal now that you're back there and you'll see it's brought you to the Church of Vows. 
you will now meet Muriel, pastor of Vows, who's been affectionately dubbed by the community as Turtle Pope. You can give him pretty much every scroll and prayer book that you have, and he will teach you pretty much every single spell. He's like a one-stop shop for all spell books and prayer books. And he'll also give you some lore on Radagon and Renala as well. You can loot a gold sewing needle and gold tailoring tools here, which you need for Bok if you've been doing his questline. The gold sewing needle will progress his questline and the golden tailoring tools will allow him to alter the garments of demigod armor, aka boss armor. Also, you'll find a statue here that will grant you absolution. From memory, you need a specific item to use it, and essentially what it does is it will revive any key NPCs in the game that you have killed. So if you're worried that you've messed up someone's quest line, you can come here, be absolved, and the NPCs will be revived again. That's all I'm going to touch on in this area, because this is already encroaching into the Leonia East video that I wanted to do in the coming days. So we'll head back to the academy and wrap up. Warp back to the debate parlor, head out of the north exit, hug the right hand wall and jump over the wall, run down this walkway and you'll see a ladder. Go all the way up the ladder, jump through the broken window and you'll be greeted with a chest with the Radagon icon inside of it. This is a legendary talisman and it shortens all spell casting time absolutely awesome icon for spellcasters and that is everything you need to know about the rea lucaria academy good luck with the boss and i'll see you in the next video bye bye